The Victorian mansion, with its peeling paint and sagging eaves, was a relic from another era. Despite its condition, it was affordable, a crucial factor for a business student like me. I shared it with three classmates, Emily, an artist who saw beauty and decay, Jake, a pre-med student buried under expensive textbooks, and Chloe, a history major with an interest in local lore. We adapted to the house's worn charm, though the creeping sense of unease was hard to ignore. The house had been advertised with unique character, a polite euphemism for its dilapidated state. Mr. Wilkins, our landlord, was notorious for his hasty deals and minimal upkeep. All four rooms had been rented to us, and one of his stipulations was that if one of us broke our lease, the others would have to make up the difference in rent. We had all agreed to this illegal deal because we were desperate for a cheap place to stay. Stories circulated about odd occurrences and sudden tenant departures, but I dismissed these as exaggerations. The house's long history and constant turnover of students led me to believe these tales were mere fabrications. At first, the house seemed like any old building. Creaky floorboards and drafts were minor inconveniences. I attributed the occasional chill to its age. But soon, unsettling details emerged. Murmurs echoed through empty rooms, and shadows darted just out of my sight. I tried to rationalize these phenomena, but they gnawed at my peace of mind. One evening, as I walked to the shared bathroom down the dimly lit hallway, a growing sense of dread took hold. It began with a faint brush against my neck, like a whisper of air. I mentioned this to Emily as she painted, absorbed in building a portfolio for her senior exhibition. Old houses do that, Emily said, her focus unwavering. They have a way of getting into your head. Her detached manner felt more like a shield than reassurance. Jake buried in his textbooks and laptop, barely glanced up. We're all under a lot of stress, he muttered, as if explaining away the strange occurrences with fatigue. Chloe, intrigued but pragmatic, suggested we research the history of the old mansion after finals were over. There might be something to the stories, she said, her attention split between typing an essay and flipping through a worn tome on her desk. But I doubt... It's anything serious. Their downplayed reactions left me feeling isolated. And, to add to my unease, my cat, Luna, usually composed, began acting erratically. She followed me to the bathroom, her eyes wide, hissing at shadows. Her strange behavior, including frantic pacing and desperate meows at night, only intensified my anxiety. Over cups of coffee and cream cheese bagels, I discussed my recent paranormal experiences with my two female housemates. Emily sipped from her mug, thoughtfully. Cats can be weird around old houses, she murmured. Chloe agreed, albeit more thoughtfully, spreading butter onto her toasted bagel. They can pick up on things we might not notice. Jake was absent from our discussion having left early for a pre-med study group. These supernatural events escalated in one evening. While working on accounting homework, an icy coldness enveloped me. It was as if the air itself had become a living presence. Hoarse voices grew louder, forming almost intelligible words that chilled me. This experience sent me jumping out of my chair and running down the stairs onto the front porch of the house with my pack of cigarettes and a Zippo lighter. I had started smoking again. My sleep was plagued by dreams of shadowy figures just beyond my reach. Of course, I had to share this new, odd experience with my housemates, when they took the time to inquire about how I was doing. Emily's observation, it's easy to let your mind play tricks on you in a place like this, felt dismissive. Jake's curt reply, you're overreacting. We all have a lot going on stung deeply. Chloe's detached sympathy. If you need to talk or leave, just let me know. Left me feeling utterly alone. Chloe, coming from a wealthy family, didn't mind the prospect of one of us leaving abruptly. But the lack 
of real empathy from my housemates was palpable. One evening, after a grueling day of classes, I was met with the acrid smell of burnt food. Jake had ruined his dinner, and the smoke thickened, curling up the stairs. I stumbled up the smoky staircase, my shirt covering my nose and mouth. As I ascended the last step, a forceful grip captured my hair and yanked my head back, sending a wave of terror through me. I pulled away and ran onto the top floor. I turned to confront whatever was behind me. The smoke silhouetted something vaguely familiar. Suspended from a swirling rift in the top corner of the walls. It was a nightmarish reflection of myself. An unnerving doppelganger with mottled gray skin and jaundiced eyes. The rift pulsed with unnatural energy, distorting the surface it had burrowed out from. Horrified, I realized that this hallway entity wasn't some generic ghost. It was a fragment of another dimension trying to break through. I turned on my heel and ran, wasting no time. Desperate, I grabbed my essentials and my cat and I crawled out of my bedroom window. I threw my suitcase onto the front lawn and shimmied down the trellis with Luna tucked under my arm. Her fur bristled, reflecting my fear. I picked up my suitcase and I ran to the sidewalk where I called an Uber. I headed straight to a hotel. Looking back, the old house loomed ominously, its darkened windows like watching eyes. In the days following my departure, I contacted my parents, who reluctantly wired me funds for a studio apartment in a seedier part of town for my final semester. My housemates' responses to my sudden departure were mostly the same. Emily was indifferent and a little dismissive. Jake was curt and irritated at the loss of my contribution, and Chloe, while sympathetic, offered little comfort. Their lack of belief left me feeling like an oddball. Now, I live with a constant sense of dread. Every shadow and strange noise sends my heart racing. Even in my new apartment, the fear clings to me like a second skin. Luna remains skittish and uneasy. Her behavior is marked by constant vigilance, as if she remembers the terror of Maple Street. I've tried to let it go, but that nightmare lingers, a haunting echo of the house's malevolent presence. Though I've moved far away, the doppelganger's jagged smile lingers in my dreams, a reminder of the terror that once engulfed me. My waking hours are marred by a persistent paranoia, a constant fear that the entity might be looking for me. Perhaps the entity never truly left. Maybe it exists only in the corners of my mind. In the end, it's not just about what was left behind, but what I carry with me.